Hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio, I'm a computer vision developer and consultant, and I help companies, students, and freelancers to easily and efficiently build visual recognition projects. Today, we will be building object tracking from scratch. So if you try to build object tracking by yourself and you are not, you were not able to do that, or if you have an idea what is object tracking, so after object detection, you are stuck with your project, or if you tried the algorithms, object tracking algorithms offered by OpenCV and you are not satisfied with them, today you will understand from zero, from scratch, how you can build your own tracker for your own custom detector. So, if you're ready, let's start. Uh, before we start, let me tell you the requirements just to follow along. You need only one library, which is OpenCV Python. If you work with computer vision and if you already follow me, I guess that you already have that. If you don't have, don't worry. Just open the command prompt on Windows, CMD, command prompt. And of course, if you have Ubuntu, Linux or Mac, it's really similar. You just open the terminal. On Windows, we type pip install OpenCV Python. Of course, you need at least to have Python installed. And then you press enter. If you have Ubuntu and you're using Python 3, you need to type pip3 install OpenCV-Python. On the Mac, it should be good to go with pip install Python, uh, OpenCV Python. Then, this is the first requirement regarding the library, then you need to download the files that I'm going to give you. You will find a link down in the description of this video where there is blog posts and source code. And inside that link, you will find these four files to download, at least three files plus a folder. We have a video, which is the demo video that I'm going to use for this project where we have traffic in Los Angeles and we're tracking that. So we have this view. Then we have objectdetection.py, objecttracking.py, DNN model, we're going to use a deep learning model, which will do the detection so that later we can focus on the tracking. And you will see everything from scratch of this, so don't worry. And now, after you downloaded this file, we will be ready to start. So let's start with object detection. We're going to First of all, import the CV2 library, the OpenCV library, import CV2, which is OpenCV. Then we're going to import NumPy as NP. Now le let's load the video footage. We need to load a cap object, cap equals CV2.video capture. And then we need to put the path of the video. Considering I have the video on the same folder where it is the Python file, it's called laws underscore angeles dot mp4. We just put the name laws angeles dot mp4. Now let's get the frames from the video. Underscore frame equals cap dot read. So with this, we take one frame from the video. Let's show the frame cv2 dot im show frame, frame, and then cv2 dot weight key zero. So that once we display the frame, we want a function which keeps the window open. If we don't have anything, the code will finish and it closes. So this will is waiting that we press a key. So let's now just run this one as a test. This is just the first test to make sure that everything that we are going, we're doing so far is correct. Now we have a simple frame that we extracted from the video file. So it's a good start that we get the frame that we're not getting any error. Now that we have the frame, we can go on. What is a video? A video is nothing more than a lot of images one after the other. So for example, if you check the specs of the camera, it's written, for example, the camera can record at 30 FPS. It means that it can record 30 frames per second. It means that in one second, there are 30 images. So right now we're going to get the frames one after the other in a loop. So we put everything after the cap object in a loop while true. While true, we take the frame 
Let's run now this one. I know that if you have some experience with OpenCV, this might seem too basic, but I think it's good to start from the basics, but we will get soon to object tracking, so don't worry about that. Now we have a frame. It's waiting for us to press a key. If I press a key, we go to the next frame, next frame and so on. Now I'm pressing the space bar or any key and we're moving. So now we, with just these few lines, we loaded the video on OpenCV. Now, if we want to change something to make this in real time, we can just say, instead of weight key zero, which is freezing the frame, we say key equals cv2 dot weight key one. So one is going to wait one millisecond between each frame. Then of course, we want to be able to quit if we want. So we can say if the key is 27, which is the S key on the keyboard, we're going to break. So we're out of the, of the loop. We release the, uh, the video file, cap.release, and we make sure that we close everything. So cv2.destroy all windows. And that's fine. And let's run this one. Okay, we have the video. Now, as our first goal is object detection, let's do object detection. To simplify everything, as I explained quite a lot already object detection in other videos, I'm going to just import one video, uh, one file, the one that you can download that I showed before. So it's the same file that I have here on the same folder, it's objectdetection.py. And the file will do everything that we need. So from object detection, we're going to import object detection. And now we're going to load the object detection. So load object detection. Instead of load, it's maybe more correct to say initialize object detection. We call this OD. You can call this whatever you want. I just use OD for standard version, for shorter version of object detection. OD is object detection and that's it. Now we're loading object detection with just this one single line. And we can, now that we have object detection, we can detect the objects on the frame. So detect objects on frame. How do we do that? We use the function od.detect. We want to detect where? On the frame, of course. When we detect the objects, we want some information in return. We want, uh, and this is going to give us some information. One is for sure class ID, IDs, class IDs, scores and boxes. So the class ID, what object is that? If it's a car, it's a truck, it's a person and so on. The scores, how confident is about the det detection and boxes, the bounding box of the location of each object. Now we're going to, we want to, to make this as quick as possible. We don't want to lose no time on object detection. Let's just draw the boxes. We don't really care to make the distinction between car, truck, motorbike, and so on. We just want any, all the boxes of the objects detected. So we do for box in boxes, okay. Let's print box and let's run this one. I'm, I'm just printing this to make sure that we're extracting the information correctly. So a box is a rectangle, so we should have at least two points. So we should have coordinate X and Y of the top left point and then of the bottom right point. And that's what we get. We get an array. I mean, multiple arrays with uh, two coordinates. We have X and Y of the first point, and then we have width and height. So we can say X, Y, width and height equals box. And now we can use this to draw a rectangle. CV2 dot rectangle. We're going to draw the rectangle where well on the frame. Now to draw a rectangle, we need two points. We need the top left point and bottom right point. So we have the rectangle, top left, bottom right. The top left is the X and Y, 
the bottom right, so top left, x and y, bottom right will be x, x plus width, high, y plus, uh, plus height, x plus width and then y plus height. Uh, now a color for the rectangle, is, uh, we need three primary colors. How much of blue do we want? We don't want any blue. Let's make this green. We want the maximum of blue from 0 to 255, no red. And then thickness, uh, let's say two, the thickness of the rectangle. Now, if everything is working correctly, we should see a green rectangle surrounding the cars, or the trucks and motorbikes, all the objects that the YOLO can detect. We're using the YOLO version 4 pre-trained, so it can detect up to 80 categories. And that's what I was expecting. Of course, uh, we see the detection on these objects uh, right here. At the beginning, it cannot detect such small objects like that uh, really far. But we care only about the detection of the objects at the beginning. I will not improve any further the object detection because that's, that's enough. That's a pretty great just uh, for starting right now with object detection. Instead, okay, we got an error right away. So that it's good that we got the error right now because we can solve it in real time. We got an error on line 14, right here. When we detect, we on object detection, I know already what is this error. It says that the frame is empty, size empty. You need to know that when you when we have a video, a video is made of a total number of frames. At some point, the video is going to end. If the video ends, there will be no more frame. So we are, we are trying to detect the cars on a frame that doesn't exist. So we need to make sure that if there are no more frames, we quit. So let's make a small change, red frame. When we get the frames from cap, we have frame, which is the frame. That's easy to understand, then red, is saying true or false. True if we have the frame, false if there are no more frames. And so if red is false, or better, if not red, we break. So if we're, there are no more frames, we quit. Easy. Now we are done with object detection. Let's now move to object tracking. We are going to, first of all, understand the principle of the object tracking and why it's somehow complex and not so intuitive if you are not familiar with computer vision. To understand object tracking, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to print the boxes for each, uh, for each frame. So let's print box and then let's print the coordinates. Uh, box, we're going to print X, Y, width and height. And then we're also going to show the frame numbers. To show the frame numbers, we need to start the count. So we initialize our count zero, count zero. So initialize count. And each time we get a frame, we say plus one. I'm going to get this information so that later we can make a study on, it will make more sense later why we're getting the frame number. For the moment, just follow along with what I am doing. So frame, once we get the frame, we say count plus equal one. And then let's also show, okay, box frame. Okay, let's say, just say frame number, frame. Frame, frame number like this, and then we put the count, and then we display the coordinates. I know that there are better ways to print this, but then just to make this as intuitive as possible. So don't focus too much on this. Instead, let's now run this one. So we should see now 
everything as before we should see the uh, the rectangle surrounding the uh, the cars and vehicles plus we should see printing all the coordinates as we see right here on the terminal for each frame that's what we get now that's not all i wanted to make now to make things even more simple let's only uh, freeze the frames and so that we can focus frame after frame and let's now run this one so i put weight key zero when you put zero on the weight key it always freezes the frame so that we can stop and focus on the terminal on what what we're getting now this is object detection object detection is nothing more than having bounding boxes in this case around the objects in this case our uh, goal is detecting the vehicle so we have bounding boxes surrounding cars trucks motorbikes and so on when we print the result the results this is what we have on the on our output we have frame number one so for the first frame we have box with coordinate 505802 with 133178 and then we have a lot of other boxes this is the detection on the first frame now let's go on the next next frame on frame number two we have the coordinates we have 497 the first one 810 140 and 190 but there is no connection between the first frame and the second frame so there is no connection between the coordinates that we have here with the coordinates that we had on the previous frame so if we need to check what box uh if this box that we have for this specific car this uh black car on the left side what was on the previous previous frame we have no clue the code doesn't give anything that can match the same car so we cannot we are now just detecting a box random boxes of the cars frame after frame but there is no connection over time between them so we cannot say that this box that it's now here now we go on the next frame we cannot say that it's the same one that it's here now how can we solve the problem of course there are simple ways to solve the problem the simplest that you that I can think of probably if you try you can think of the same one is to take the center point of the frame and we can do I mean not, not of, the, of the frame of the of the bounding box uh, let's take now the center point of each bounding box how do we take the center point we can do center x equals in geometry the center point is x x1 plus x2 divided by 2 we have x1 which is the x we can calculate x2 x2 will be x plus width so we have x plus plus x plus width and we're going to divide everything by 2 by 2 and let's make sure that this is an integer because the coordinate mark must be always integer number either for example 50 or 51 it cannot be 50.5 then center y is the same concept y plus y plus height divided by 2 now for this let's draw a circle so i can prove you that we're getting correctly the center point cv2 dot circle uh we're going to draw a circle on the frame let's make the uh, the position of the circle center x center y the size of the circle let's make this uh, five of radius the color of the circle let's make this red so it's well visible so zero of blue zero of green and 255 of red which red which is the maximum of the red and now we can say minus one which is going to fill the circle with all the color and after this we can run the object detection and let's check how this works now we have a circle for each car as you see 
So the idea is we're going to store all the circles right away. On the next frame, we compare the new circle with the previous circles. Let's do that. And then I will explain this further. I don't want to put a lot of information. Let's go step by step with a practical approach. Uh, mm, okay, let's store all the information so we can say center points, center points. We create a dictionary and we are going to, uh, now it gets a bit tricky to, to work on this. So let's, let's think about this. We're going to add the center point and we're now going to store the point position in real time so that when we go to new frames we don't lose the position of the previous points but we keep them and later thanks to this we can do the tracking so we have we can create before the loop center points we create an empty array and on each loop we're going to fill the array with the new points so just here once we get center x and center y we can say center point dot append and we're going to append center x and center y then instead of displaying the circle just in real time we display all of the circles that we have stored over time for pt in center points and now we display the circle showing all the points that we loop through center points. And let's run this one. Uh, here we have the points. This is just the first frame. Now, when we go to the next frame, consider we're displaying all the points that we saved over time, we can see that we have new points, but also we have the previous ones. So we have this point, which was the white car on the previous frame. Now we have the point of the white car on the next frame and so on and now checking this it will be easy to understand what can be a tracking solution an object tracking will be for example assigning a univocal id to each single box by comparing the position of the point of the previous frame and the point on the on this current frame when the point are really close we can consider that that one is the same object and that's an approach that we can easily use and it will work uh, it will work well in this scenario because this is very simple object tracking on the highway of course object tracking is a quite complex subject because if you consider there might be some time occlusion so the object might be hidden by something else for a few frames uh, also like the uh, when you are tracking people in a very crowded area it's easy to lose the tracking or like that if there is some occlusion, the ID get exchanged between other closed objects. So this is a good example for you to, to learn, apply this principle to study object tracking. But if you want to use this for commercial projects or like real life scenario projects, unless it's a simple scenario, this wouldn't work well. And I recommend in that case to use pre-ready existent object tracking algorithms like for example sort or deep sort i have them on my video course object detection with OpenCV and deep learning so if you want to get more advanced stuff at, at a professional level i recommend to check that one now let's keep going with this lesson right here we have saved the points over time now it's the moment to compare the position of the points from the previous frame with the next frame and associate a, an ID to make the object tracking. So let's uh, let's do this operation right now. Instead of putting center points and making the array always bigger, let's just check one, uh, one frame and the second frame, then another frame so we don't we don't have to we don't need the history of if the video has 100 frames we don't want to save 100 frames for 100 frames all the points but we want to check only current frame new frame and compare them like this way 
uh, because it doesn't matter where the object was at the beginning of the video if at the end of the video is on a completely different position so we need just to check like the closest frame so we need to follow the object step by step so for this reason we're going to take center points from this one we can inside the loop center points we can make the array empty each time and so like get center points of current frame we can say center point center points center pds current frame points current frame mm. oh let's let's use points uh, I, I didn't want to make the variable name too long let's just keep this center points car frame and let's change with what we have center points now what is a solution to keep this on the next frame so that we can compare them an idea will be before ending the loop we can make a copy so just right here before the wait key event make a copy of the points so we can call this center points instead of current frame we can say previous frame and say center points current frame dot copy now we made a copy of center points previous frame so that later we can make a comparison between them and we can check the distance the close points are going to form an object tracking id when the points are too far it means that probably we have a new object so let's let's do something with this uh, we can make a comparison so we can check for point in center point current frame then we we want to compare two arrays the new points and the previous points but how do we do that let's first print them because i'm putting too many things together and it might be confusing to follow so what i want to do will be count okay we have center points current frame let's print them car frame let's print center points current frame we want also to print center points previous frame print previous frame third points previous frame now it it will happen that we get an error because we are trying to print center points preview frames before that we generate them so an idea will just be when we start the code let's make an empty array so that for the first frame we don't have any problem because we need yet to generate that center points previous frame it's empty and after the first frame we'll fill it and that is no problem but at the beginning we need to just create an empty frame an um, empty array to store them okay we have them we have current frame and is this these are the center points of this frame okay i don't have the circle to display them but we have them let's go up we have current frame we have all the points previous frame it's empty because it's the first frame so we have just a current frame we don't have a previous frame but if we check now current frame we have for example position of the first point is 571 891 so when we go on frame number two we have now current frame of course we have new position and then we have the previous frame is exactly what on frame number one was current frame so 571 and so on now on the loop we can loop through the current position through the previous position compare the distance when the points are really close we say that's the same object we assign an id and we start the tracking of that one so let's check slowly for let's loop through them for point is center for pt in center points current frame for pt2 in center points previous frame we need to check the distance we have a, uh, a geometrical format to check the distance between 
two points or we are also the python solution really simple by importing the math module I have that already import math and then we can say distance equals math dot high pot and it's x2 minus x1 so we need to take the x uh, pt2 the x we take the first coordinate x minus uh, minus point x so we take point zero and then pt2 one the second value is the y minus pt just pt one and we have the distance now what we can say if the distance distance is less than distance is less than we can say let's say just 10 pixels then it's the same object so if the, this is the same object we're going to add the object we create a new id for the specific object so we can create a, a dictionary we can say for example uh, tracking objects and we're going to add now a new id if um, <laughs> well it, it gets tricky because there are a lot of things I, ideally this will be done with multiple files uh, multiple functions be to have a code well organized but i'm doing this all compressed in one lesson so you need to understand that it might be a bit more complex for some reason to follow but it's good anyway if distance is less than 10 then we are going to add tracking objects tracking objects we're going to add a new object of course we don't want to say to have the same id for different objects so we need to have a track id so if we have car one will be track cars uh, if we have the first car will be car zero then if we have the second one we cannot say that's car zero it must be car one the new car will must be car two and so on so we can say track id we start the count from zero tracking objects we start with track id and we are going to put what we're going to put the center point the center point right now that it's point of the car of the previous frame it's of course the point of the new frame because we want the, the current position of the object we don't want the the last one the the, the second last one we want the current one so we add the point and then of course we want to increase track id once we add the point so we say track id plus equal one and now to make sure that we're doing everything correctly let's display the circle let's look through the tracking objects for oh, first i'm going to print them tracking objects um let's print tracking objects to see what we have right now print 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 tracking objects and let's run this one oh so now we have tracking object of course at the beginning it's empty because we don't have anything then we go on the next frame and we get now an id and then a position of the object so we need now to show the center point and the id for this specific object so let's do that see if it uh, we can this ah, we can look through that for track for let's say uh object id and then point in tracking objects dot items and we uh, display let's show the point cv2 i'm going to copy the circle cv2 circle and also let's display a text 
showing the ID. CV2 put text. We want to put the text where on the frame. Okay, here it's not C X and Y, but it's PT. We want to put the text on the frame. Then what is the text? We want to show the ID. So the string of object ID. Then there will be the position of the text. Let's put this on this exactly where is the point but a bit up so we say the, the same x of the point of the center point but we don't put the same y otherwise the the text is covering the center points let's put a bit up let's say seven minus seven pixels then font uh, font type zero we don't really care about making the font nice we just take the first font size one and let's make the text red as the a circle and then minus two for the thickness of the text and let's see what we get and now you can see that something interesting is happening right here because on some cars we have an ID associated in this one we have zero we have four three two one and so on you can see that some of them don't have the ID, for example, this one and this one. You might wonder, why is this happening? Why some have the ID and some they don't have the ID? If you follow carefully and if you are focused on what I was doing, you should already spot why you are not getting the ID. The reason is that when we get the distance, of the points on the previous frame and the current frame we're only adding the idea if the distance is shorter than 10 pixels some cars especially the one at the bottom considering that the camera is closer so the movement is faster so it's likely that the distance is greater than 10 it might be most likely less than 20 so if we put less than 20 it should take them all together without any problem so we should see also them of course we don't want to put a very big distance because otherwise we might include also objects that are card that are not the same one okay interesting enough now on the second frame we got also uh, these cars at the bottom just changing the distance let's now keep distance 20 and let's move on what is now our goal our goal is to keep the same id for the same car so this car has now id zero on the next frame we don't want a new number we want same id zero so a univocal id associated with each single object the same is for the car on the left with id one this one will be id five and for all the cars that we detect the better we are able to keep the id on each car the better will be the tracking because that's after all it's the tracking associating a univocal id for each object if the id gets lost if uh, the object changes the id it means that we are not doing well our task of object tracking for example now if we go on new frames we're just adding ids of course now we need to improve this function and there is something to, to fix right here. What happens now is we did that at the beginning, we were comparing previous frame with current frame to check the IDs. When we already have some objects, some IDs saved, we want to change a bit the things. And instead of comparing, the previous frame with the current frame we want to compare the current frame with the objects that we are already tracking if that makes sense plus we might have also current frame as pre previous frame for adding new ids mm, of course there are many things that we can work on but for the moment let's start step by step And of course, this will work only if we are starting. So if it's only at the first frame, we do this comparison. So if 
if the frame so if count is greater than zero so if it's the first frame we compare previous and current frame so only only at the beginning we compare previous and current frame else else oh sorry if count is less or equal one so let's say if count is one less equal one we do this otherwise we're going to compare for pt2 in center points current frame with what we're going to compare with the objects that we already have with the ids for pt so not not uh point current frame so for point two in tracking objects dot items so of course we have also the object id object id and we say if the object is the same so if the distance is less than 20 then we want to ah, okay we need to first of all calculate the distance and we do this if the distance is less than 20 we want to update the position so we keep the same tracking track tracking objects tracking objects the dictionary we want to update object id equals um, equals well ah the new position okay equals equals pt and let's try this one there might be some improvement to make also the code is not the best because we are repeating the code so ideally we will do functions for this but so far let's see how how it works and once we are sure of course it can be improved and there is something that i'm not happy with about this because it's not working as i expected so for some reason we have always m tracking objects is always empty so if the count is less or equal one okay i guess that probably we need to go for at least two frames uh that that was my mistake we need to go for at least a couple of frames to get the first tracking object so we were going only on the first frame of course on the first frame we don't have the tracking object so if count is less or equal to then okay now it's the moment of the truth if i press space bar we should see the same id but changing position ah oh, and we have them so we have id 0 id 1 so now with this simple trick our tracking is working of course this needs to be improved but there is only one problem that when we lose the id the, the id stays there and we don't want that to happen so now we are adding the new ids but we also want to delete them when they're not there anymore so when we loop through them if the ob so if the object was not updated we want to remove that so in this case we have update object position object position and mm -hmm. so i'm thinking what is the best way so first we can look through the dictionary and we can check 
if we don't have the updated position. So let's let's invert that. Instead of looping first through the array of the new points and then the dictionary with the tracking, we loop through the dictionary of the tracking and then through the array so that we know is object ID one. If we got a new position for object ID one, if we have a new position, we update one, we make the update. If we don't have the position, we are going to remove that. So we know right away we have it or we don't have it. For point, okay, so for object ID and point two, like this, then for point in center points current frame. Now, how do we know if we found the update or if we haven't found it? Here we can create a variable is object ID. Uh, ob, let's say object is it exists object exists equals false. So when we're checking, when we're looping through the tracking objects, before we compare them with the new positions, we don't know if that object is still on the frame or a new position or if it's out of the frame. So at the beginning, we assume that we don't have the object. So we say object exists is false. When we loop through this, if the distance is less than 20, in this case, object ID exists. So we can say object exists is true. And of course, once we find the object, there is no reason to keep looping, looping on the same arrays. So we say continue. It, it won't change much, but we are losing resources. So once we find the uh, once we find the association with the ID, let's go to the next ID. We don't need to see all the possible associations if we have that already. No, okay. Uh, I by mistake I cancelled everything. Object exists exists is false distance is less than 20 if at the end so here we update the object position then we want to remove that if objects if not object exists so if object is, exists is still false we want to remove the id remove the id So we can say tracking objects dot pop and we remove the uh, this specific object ID. And let's run this one. Uh, okay, uh, I got an error. I expected expected this, but I want to make sure that uh, it didn't work. So I tried anyway. You cannot remove uh, elements from a dictionary when you are looping on the dictionary. So we should make a copy of the dictionary, loop through that and then remove the elements. And so we can do, now the code is getting a bit long, tracking objects mm, items. So tracking objects copy equals tracking objects dot copy. So we loop on tracking objects copy dot I actually we can just loop in tracking objects dot copy dot items so that we're looping through a copy that looks interesting better this way. So we're looping through a copy of tracking objects. I'm not sure. Let's just go with the safest option tracking objects copy like this and now it should be interesting. I'm, I'm almost sure that it should work right away that then that we easily remove the IDs. So let's let's have. OK, now we are going to the new frames. Let's see. Let's focus on this ID zero now. We oh, nice. So we have ID zero. We are we lost the tracking of that car. So we remove ID zero. And we do for each kind of car that we we lose the tracking, we do that. Now, of course, there is another problem. 
And the problem is that uh, when we have a new cars, uh, we don't have new IDs. So we should find a way also to add new IDs. Let's now find a way to add the new objects for the points of the current frame that don't have any connection with the previous frame. Now we're not just considering them at all. There is a simple way to do this. Once we loop through tracking objects, so we update the tracking objects, but also we're, lo we're looping through center points current frame. What is going to happen? That if there is a match between the center points current frame and the tracking objects, then we make the update. If there is no match, we're not doing anything and we should add a new point. But the problem is how do we know if there is no match because we have a lot of looping. It's, it's a bit confusing now on how to proceed on this. A simple way will be each time there is an update, we're going to remove the point from the list. So all the points that are left that don't have anything to do with the list will be the new points that we want to add. And as for the dictionary of the tracking objects uh, points, we need to make a copy of center points current frame. So let's do this copy so that we can remove them in real time and we have only the left points center points current frame copy equals to center points current frame dot copy wow there's a very long variable right here center points current frame dot copy and now tracking objects copy so once we loop in center points current frame, we loop, we loop on the current frame copy and from the original one, if the object doesn't exist, uh, no, uh, it's the opposite. Once we update the position, we want to remove this, this object from the list because it was already updated. So object exists. Also, we want to say center points current frame dot remove and we want to remove the specific point we want to remove pt we remove pt so the points that are left will be the new points mm. probably it's we can even uh, we can even print them so we have a clue of what's happening tracking objects okay we're printing them we're printing the current frame current frame left points i know it's a lot of things that we are doing right now and if you don't have experience with this you might be lost but the concept that we are that uh, i'm bringing here are very simple so it's mostly a matter of practice to understand uh, all the points that we're extracting on the loops and what we're doing with them. Okay, I'm now checking. For example, now I went to the next frame. You can see that we have tracking objects. Now current frame left points, we have only two new points. So I'm just checking that with this variable we have only the left points when we have new detection new detection so in this case for example we we have how many boxes we have one two three four five six boxes without the center point so we should have six points and we have one two three four five six so it means that uh, we're on the right track and now things should be quite easy we can loop through for center points current frame so, so uh, for pt in center points current frame what do we do we do tracking objects ID so we say uh, mm, ah, okay 
I'm thinking how I can how can we increase the ideas how can we increase the ideas okay to increase the ideas of the dictionary we can get the length of the dictionary so if there are 10 objects id if we get the length it will be 10 if we have 11 it will be 11 so we can say track id okay we have track id okay let's not over complicate things we have track id which we were using before let's use that right now also so we just simply use track id equals pt and then we increase track id each time and let's let's run this one so while it's running so this is add new ids found remove ids so we'll remove ids which were lost 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 ids update ids position okay we have uh, now we have all the ids now we want to make sure first that ids lost get the removed oh i did some mess probably yeah mm. something is not working as expected line 62 I need to pause and figure out what what happened. Uh, okay, I believe it was matter of wrong indentation. So here we are doing uh, everything after else we're doing everything related to tracking, and add new ideas found must be right uh, here. So wrong indentation. I haven't tested this yet, but that should be most likely the error. So. And now you know you should probably know how important is indentation in python okay so we should now lose the ids and get new ids and that is what is happening plus some some error sometimes we are trying to remove the x in the list twice oh, okay because here we're uh, looping multiple times through it's double looping so if we remove the ob the element once we're trying to remove the element again then uh, it's a problem so we can say if pt in center points current frame then only in that case we remove it so let's now test our final version of the code so i'm going to run this one and let's wait a few seconds that this starts running and if we check carefully we can see that the tracking so the ids stay with the cars so the id don't change unless we have in some specific position where probably we lose the detection so we lose also the id but generally around the middle of the road the tracking seem quite uh, good of course this can be improved we could implement other algorithms like for example kanban filter which i can't do that right now because it will take a lot of time or i recommend also specifically for commercial projects to use the pre built algorithms so there is no point to build something from scratch when there are algorithms made by researchers which were tested on different environments which already work well and i recommend the most useful that i've tried in user commercial projects are sort and deep sort all the code that i wrote today you will find on the link down below in the description so you can download the code and you can use this one even though i always recommend to write everything everything by yourself just following the video so that you can learn more easily than just running pre-made code by me now before concluding i want to let you know that i have premium courses where i teach all of this 
plus more advanced things regarding object detection, object tracking, and where I build commercial projects from scratch. And you can find the link of my course, object detection with OpenCV and deep learning, where you can get all of these things. This is all for this video and see you on the next video.